Thursday evening service. Let's all stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we just come before you in faith, Lord Jesus. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord God, as we come before you, God, we just ask that you would build us up in this service in that mighty way that only you and the power of the Holy Ghost know how to move in our life. God, and what you, you wrote our faith. God, we just ask that you would write more faith into our life. God, that you would just take that time to, to put those building blocks in our life and help us to be that man and that woman of God that you would want each and every one of us to be. And God, if there be anything in our lives tonight, God, we just ask that you would work those things out. God, help us to one day to see you in heaven. And each and every day that we praise and we worship your holy name, it's just one step closer to you. We're careful tonight just to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you remain standing, let's grab a hymnal and turn to page 89 and sing that song, Glory to His Name. Page 89. Jesus just wants us to be. 
pleasure today and be made complete. God, we just thank you for your presence that's here. God, we just thank you for all the blessings that we have in our life. And God, we know that you care for each and every one of us. God, you don't have no bad feelings or ill will for any of us. God, all you have is just love and just grace and mercy for each and every one of us. Amen and amen. Isn't God good? God loves us and God is awesome. You may be seated. It's a blessing to be a part of Team J, isn't it? Amen. Did you know that Christ cares about each and every one of us? Yes, he does. The Bible says, but even very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows. Amen. Sometimes the day goes by, and sometimes we don't like to glorify the devil. We really don't. Because when we stand behind the pulpit in every aspect, it's always about Christ. That's what but sometimes when the week goes by, the devil comes along. He is the adversary. Right. And he starts to beat us down in our life. And we just get a little bit negative sometimes. Sometimes we even think to ourselves, why am I alive? But Christ knows the numbers that are on our head. Yes, he does. We are more valuable than many sparrows. That's right. We are more valuable than precious gold. Amen. 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 And Christ takes the time, just like a loving father and a loving mother, in our lives to come along and say, How are you doing? Oh, yeah. How was your day? That's right. And why does he do that? Because he loves us. That's right. Each and every one of us in this church building tonight. Most likely, at some point in our life, has had a best friend. Yeah. Amen. And you know what the sign of a best friend is? Mm -hmm. Someone that knows your faults and failures, mm -hmm. and it still is your friend. Mm -hmm. right. that's, right. yeah. that's someone that's a true friend. Amen. Yeah. And as we sit in this service tonight, that's Christ. Ah. That's the way Jesus is in our life. He yeah. knows our faults and failures. Yeah. He knows what happened today. He knows what happens through the week. And he's still our friend. Amen. Amen. It is truly good to be in the house of the Lord amongst brothers and sisters, men and women that truly love God and want to serve something from God. You know how we're up here? We always like to say something about family. I didn't know, but uh, Brother John and his wife, I didn't know they were in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I had noticed that they were in service. I was in my mind, I was like, well, where are they at? Where are they at? Because they haven't missed a service in about two months <laughs> since they started coming. Yeah, exactly. They just came back and they just got, got right on in. Right. And that's the things that we like to see. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So when all of a sudden someone ain't in church, so you're like, where are they at? Yeah. <laughs> Did they get in a car accident? Yeah. Or something? You know, your, your mind is just going a mile a minute, so to speak. But that's the family of God. We're always yeah, looking yeah, out yeah. for us Amen. and wanting to know where individuals are at. And maybe when we see things like that, we just pray for them. Yeah. And then I said something to him about, about it to a pastor. And I said, oh, they're down in Texas. Oh. Okay, no problem. But we didn't, brother, you, brother, sister, you got to let me know. <laughs> we just, we just, we just praying. But once again, be praying for a church building. We still haven't lost the vision. We haven't really talked about it much lately, but we're still looking for a church building. Something that will hold about four to five hundred people. Amen. Now that, that's my goal. Four to five hundred people. That's what we're really going to be looking for. And we just believe God for that blessing. Amen. God's got a blessing for us. Yes. We just have to believe. Yes. And we have to put feet to the faith. Amen. Yes. We got to be looking. We've got to be praying. If you see something in the paper or if you're just driving down the road and you see something, give pastor a call. Yes. Say, hey, I saw this over on this such and such street. Just want to let you know, pastor. Yes. And we can go ahead and look into that. You just never know what God's going to bless Ooh. us with. So be praying for a church building That's and be right. praying for your church family yes. amen? amen and also we don't want to forget what's coming up saturday anybody tell me what's coming saturday prayer, prayer meeting 12 o'clock amen, amen. <laughs> be in prayer meeting it'll bless your soul be a good time sunday morning at 11 o'clock and sunday night at 6 30 and back in bible study tuesday again on bible study we always like to teach that or uh, talk about that a lot because i always really enjoy it in the aspect of topical bible studies pastors talking about being blessed mm -hmm. right. the be attitudes and really a good bible study really want to be here and God will really bless your soul. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to receive the Thursday evening tithe and offering. And if brother would come, remember, all Christians pay tithe and give offerings unto the Lord. Brother, Amen. please pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this time to give back to you. We ask you both to bless and give to the givers in this service. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you for your giving tonight. The Lord will truly bless you. Amen. At this time, sister is going to be, pastor's coming right here. At this time, pastor is coming to minister the word of God. God bless Amen. you, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to be back here Thursday evening. Amen. 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 Y'all excited? Amen. I mean, I'm ready to be blessed. I can come here, I ain't travel all this way to just do a little dab and go back home and, and get behind the uh, computer or the television or something like that and, and get on Netflix, whatever you want to call it. But I came here to get something. I want to be blessed tonight. You know, we're already blessed, but you know something? I, I want to be genuinely B-I-G. Amen? Now, before I start this message, and I said I was going to be, put it down a disclaimer. Now stay with me, because got to get get rough in the beginning. Well, stay with me. Just want you to know that right now, okay? But it's good for us to be here. Um, continue to pray for Sister Wall. She's going to be flying out um, to New York City uh, tomorrow for one week. Um, she's going there for a funeral, which is Monday, um, for her niece um, there in the um, Bronx. So be much in prayer for her, okay? Yes. Amen. So what you gonna do, Pastor? You gonna, you gonna I'm, I'm gonna be here. Amen. Just Jesus and me. <laughs> well, I got my neighbor downstairs. She's gonna be watching over there. <laughs> Praise God. We're gonna be in the book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter seventeen. I'm gonna be reading three verses of scripture there, different parts of Jeremiah chapter, uh, in Jeremiah. But first, Jeremiah chapter seventeen, verse one. The sin of Judah, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. Also, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And also, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. I like to take these three verses of scripture and, and other scriptures in the word of God and preach with the help of the Lord on a thought. The inward parts changed. The inward parts changed. Amen. Brother Najim, could you please pray all the message in the message tonight, please? Yes, Jesus. 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 Yes,
Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for that prayer, sir. The inward parts changed. Uh, the Lord dealt with my heart about the inward parts. The inward man, the inward woman. You know, we serve the Lord from the inside out. And when Jesus comes, that's what he's looking for. He's not looking for um, the outward show, so to speak, but he's looking for the inward man or woman. When Jesus comes back, the only thing that's going to be changed is our outward flesh. Changed in the twinkling of an eye. This mortality changing into immortality. And I said all that to say this. We got to be right on the inside. Nobody sees anything on the outside, so to speak. But Jesus sees the inside of all hearts and all lives. Stay with me tonight. If you've read the Bible any length of time, you will find out that God's people continued to sin even though they had the law, they had the prophets, and they had a history full of God's miracles. How could they do that? How could they sin like this in the face of Almighty God? Why did they continue in sin even though they understood the eternal consequences? In Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9, it says the heart is deceitful. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 1 says that their sin is engraved with a pen or iron and with the point of a diamond. It's engraved upon the table of their heart. When I read that, Diamonds, they are a girl's best friend. <laughs> but diamonds are hard. You kind of can't really break a diamond, so to speak. And when I read that, I said, man, he they, says their sin is engraved with a pen or, or iron and with the point of a diamond. Engraved. You know, when you engrave something, uh, it's etched in there. The Hebrews, they symbolize the various aspects of a person by locating, locating them in certain physical organs. The heart was the organ of reason. It was the organ of intelligence. It was the organ of the will. So deep is sin in men and women, and men and women lives are put down here, is that our tendency can only be delivered by the redemption Redemption power of Almighty God. Sin is eradicated by God Almighty. The Lord Almighty is the only one who can deliver from sin. The God in heaven is the only one who can make our inward parts correct. In Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 one more time. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately. Now, he didn't just say wicked. It says desperately wicked. Who can know it? God makes it clear that why we sin. It's a matter of the heart. A matter of the heart, the center of a man or woman. Mankind's heart is inclined toward sin from the time they are born. It's easy to fall into the routine of forgetting and forsaking Almighty God. But we choose whether or not to continue in sin. Stay with me now. We choose to yield to a specific temptation or we can ask God to help us to resist that temptation when it comes. Okay? The Lord God in heaven does not leave his creation in a state of despair. He's always with us. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll always be with you until the end of the world. He's already made a way. Is always from the beginning of time made a way for each one of us. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 33. It says, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their 
inward parts. Amen. And write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. God would write his law on the hearts of men and, men and women rather than on tablets of stone like the Ten Commandments. Mankind's sin in Jeremiah chapter seven, 17 and verse 1 was engraved in their hearts so that they wanted above all to disobey. They couldn't help it. It was engraved in their heart. They would, they would try to stop. It was engraved in there. It was like they had to go back because above all, they wanted to disobey. But another covenant was coming. Another promise was coming. A Savior. He said, after those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. Oh, that's only by a supernatural event. And right in their hearts. It's God now. He said, I'm going to write in their hearts and will be their God and they will be my people. This change right here, it seems to describe an experience like the new birth with God taking the lead. When we return or when we turn our life over to God, he, by the Holy Ghost, builds into us the desire to obey him. He builds into mankind that. The old covenant, the old law of sin and degradation, the Old Testament law broken by the people would be replaced by a new covenant, a new promise. The foundation of this new covenant would be the promise of the Messiah. And his name is who? Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6 says, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. This was radical, involving not only the Jews, but even non-Jewish people called the Gentiles, which was us. We are the Gentiles. We are the non-Jewish people. God began to engraft each one of us. He began to engraft us in the family of God. This new radical way called the born again experience offers a unique personal experience or relationship with God himself. With his laws written on individuals' hearts instead of an old stone or some rocks that he began to give in the new in the uh, Ten Commandments. God writing them on our hearts. All of us. He said, Well, preacher, I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's right from wrong. Yes, you do. God's wrote it in your heart. Back in Jeremiah's day. He looked forward to the day when this promise called Jesus Christ would come to establish his covenant. But for us today, the promise is already here. We don't have to wait. The promise is here tonight. Each one of us tonight have the opportunity to make a fresh start and establish a permanent personal uh, relationship with the almighty God. Uh, it's not uh, you don't have to go to the uh, how can I say it? Uh, you don't have to go to the bishop. You don't have to go to a uh, 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 pappy so to speak or the person that's right there uh, beginning to say I forgive you of your sin but we go straight uh, to Jesus Christ. Uh, we go straight uh, to the one uh, that we begin to confess uh, our sins to. Uh, it's the only one uh, that can begin uh, to forgive us of our sins. I'm thankful that we have a Savior who thinks about us daily. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. God speaking here now. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God's people, they were taken away in Babylon. They were taken away in Babylon captivity for 70 years. Though those Through those 70 years, they must have passed there in exile. Yet, their God is saying here in this scripture, to them, I know full well what my purpose is towards you. He didn't forget them. 
They may have been taken away to Babylon and be in to be in exile there. Huh? But the Lord says here, huh? I haven't forgotten about you. Huh? A purpose of restoring to you huh? peace. Huh? A purpose huh? of restoring to you prosperity. Huh? A, a expected end. Huh? An expected in a future and a hope. Huh? A hopeful future, so to speak. Just like God has not forgotten uh, about the Jewish nation. Uh, he has not forgotten uh, about you and I. Uh, his thoughts toward you uh, and I uh, are of peace and not of evil. Uh, don't let the devil lie to you tonight uh, saying that oh, uh, God doesn't love you. That's right. He loves each one of us here tonight. So why is that? How you know, preacher? Huh? Because he sent each one of you here tonight huh? so you can hear a message of love. Huh? That the, the message huh? that he would begin to write his laws huh? within your heart. Huh? You're here tonight huh? because of a direct purpose huh? from Almighty God. Huh? That's why this gospel, huh? this Bible called the good news huh? is the good news. He wants to see all his people living in a peaceful future and not of evil. The promise from the Father, which is Jesus Christ, was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. First John chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. But get this. In first John chapter 4 and verse 9. It says, in this was manifested or shown forth the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son in this world or in the world that he might live through him. That we might live through him. Did you get that? Yes, sir. That we might live <laughs> through him. The word says here that God sent his son into the world that we might live through him. We can't do it by ourselves. We need him. I just can't do it with my wife. My wife just can't do it with me. I can't do it with some living in, living up boyfriend or girlfriend. But I got to live it with Jesus. I can't live it by myself. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But with him, all things are possible to them that believe. He loves each one of us tonight. Love describes why God creates. Because he loves. And God creates people to love. God cares for people because he loves them. He cares for sinful people. What? I can't believe I just said that. He died for a sinful world. So he has to love. You have to love sinful people. How are you going to come to God if you don't have no sin? You need a savior. He cares for sinful people. That's right. He cares for sinful people. That's why he made a way. Why men and women are free to choose. They're free to choose. Everyone has a choice. Okay? Why we are free to choose, preacher? Because he wants a loving response for mankind. Why Christ died on the cross? His love for us caused him to offer a solution to the problem of sin which was offering up a sinless life so that we might have life he gave his only begotten son to die for a sinful world what type of God is that what type of person is that uh, that will begin to uh, allow his son to die for people that don't even love him they don't even want to turn to him, so to speak. Uh, but he began to take uh, uh, he began to take that chance uh, to, to send his only begotten son, uh, that whosoever believeth in him that should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. He took that chance. Yes. And not only in life, but that more abundantly. Now, when I was searching out this word last night, that word abundantly in the Greek means super abundant. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. In quantity or superior in quality. Excessive. Exceeding abundantly above. More abundantly. Advantage. Exceedingly very highly beyond measure. More. 
I said all that to say this. There is nothing material in this life that can give us the abundance that God wants us to have. It's all in the inward parts. Men and women are looking for an outward, an outward satisfaction. Now, they may try to look at it for a woman. Now, they may try to look for it in a man, now, in a drug, or, or, or some alcohol, or, or whatever this life wants to offer. But they can't find it uh, in this life. Uh, they can't find uh, the satisfaction that they want. Uh, the only way they can find it uh, is in the gospel, uh, the good news. Uh, God begins uh, to eradicate, uh, make it radical, uh, the inward parts of individuals. He changes the very inside of individuals. Uh, I don't know how he does it, uh, but he does it by a supernatural event. Uh, when a man or woman begins uh, to kneel themselves uh, at an old-fashioned altar uh, and yield their heart uh, unto a God that they can't even see. And he begins to answer uh, that sincere prayer that an individual begins to cry out. Uh, and God answers sincere prayer prayers. He begins, his ears begin, his ears uh, hears the prayers uh, of individuals uh, that mean business. Uh, his ears begin to hear uh, uh, the prayers, uh, those desperate prayers uh, that men and women are crying, uh, beginning to cry out to him. When we receive and apply the word of God to our lives faithfully, we will receive the super abundant life that he has for us now. And in the life to come. Yes. We ain't got to wait uh, until we get to heaven. In right, Mark right. chapter 10 verse 29 and 30. It says, and Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands uh, for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now. In this time, not begin, not when we begin to get to heaven. Now, in this time, houses and brethren and sisters, and mothers and children, and lands with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. Yes. He began to put it all in there. Huh? Oh, you ain't left nothing. Huh? You said, well, preacher, huh? I ain't got nothing. Huh? Continue to serve huh? Almighty God. Huh? Yes. You do have Jesus. Huh? He's on the inside. Huh? You said, well, I'm going through some hard times. Huh? Don't you know how huh? all of us got to go through some hard times? I always got to go through some hard times. Don't quit. Somebody told me a long time ago, don't quit, Pastor. Right. Don't quit, Brother Walls. Huh? Don't quit, Sister Walls. Huh? Continue to keep on going. Huh? It may seem hard huh, at first. Huh? It may seem uh, like the Lord is not answering your prayer. Huh? But you know something. Huh? He said, you're planting seeds. You're planting seeds. Huh? Preach the gospel. Huh? Continue to witness for Jesus. Huh? Continue to live uh, accordingly uh, what the word of God says. Uh, and you will begin uh, to see those seeds uh, grow in time. You see them grow. But we got to keep going. <laughs> Regardless of what we see uh, with our naked eye, uh, we walk not by, by our own eyesight, uh, not by this fleshly eyesight, uh, but by faith, uh, looking to Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, the one who will never leave us, uh, the one who's always with us, uh, the one uh, he begins to walk through the seven golden candlesticks, uh, the one uh, who's beginning to wait for us, uh, not only in heaven, uh, but he's here tonight. Uh, he's here uh, by his spirit, uh, dealing with the very lives of uh, of the souls that he has created. Uh, God is the one uh, that keeps individuals. Uh, God is the one uh, that keeps each one of us going. Super abundant life. You say you want that preacher? I do. I don't have to tuck tail. Before, oh, that preacher, he's preaching for the money. No, I'm not preaching for the money. I'm preaching for Jesus Christ. I want their super abundant life of heaven. Everything that heaven has to offer. And God just begins to throw, he just throws in the world. <laughs> throws in the blessings of the world at the two. Now, get me now. Mark chapter 10 verse 29. Can you go back to that, bro? It says, as Jesus answered, said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brother or sisters or father or mothers or, or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. Let's go on to the next one, brother. But he shall receive a hundredfold, not tenfold, a hundredfold now in this time. 
houses and brethren, sisters and mothers, and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. With persecution. Don't don't just throw that off there. You gotta stand up for Jesus. The world gotta know that hey, that's a Christian right there. That's a child of the king. They're not like us. Sometimes people may think, oh, they think they're better than you. But you know something? You are better than them. They need to come to Jesus Christ. We may not be better in our own in our own eye or in our own sense. But when Jesus comes to our heart, I'm not going to say that Jesus is not better than me. Jesus is better than me. With Jesus in my life, he makes me more than a conqueror. I don't have to stand. I want to talk to you and let the little man know, little man or woman say, oh, you think they're better than me. You know something with Christ in me? I am. Man, preacher, you crazy. No, I'm not. How are you going to speak down? How are you going to speak down to Jesus that lives on the inside of you? Listen, somebody else say, oh, you think you're better? No, I don't. But with Christ, I am. And you can be the same way. Well, you know, the church did me wrong, preacher. You know, oh, they're going to bring all these things up from the past. In fact, people live in the past constantly. You know, I may have had a bad experience at a dentist's office, but I still go get my teeth done. I may have had a bad experience at McDonald's, but I go to another McDonald's. Anyway, thanks. Let's move on. God expresses his love for eternity. For eternity. Not just now. But he gives, he gives us whatever we need now. How does he do it? He starts off, each one of us, by living by faith. Everything you do for the Lord is by faith. Coming to church is by faith. Praying is by faith. Preaching is by faith. Giving of your finances is by faith. Living for the Lord each and every day is by faith. Praying for your children is by faith. You say, well, can anything be tangible? God makes it tangible when he answers your prayer. And he does do that. I could say time after time, uh, as me and my wife begin to live for the Lord, uh, time after time, God has always come through. Uh, I've never seen the righteous forsaken uh, or seed begging bread. Uh, God has never forsaken us. Uh, he's always been with us. Uh, I can say of a certainty uh, that he's here tonight. Uh, he's backing up his word. Uh, why is that, preacher? Uh, because he's not a God that's going to back up. Uh, but he's a God that always goes forward. Uh, he's never lost a battle. Uh, you begin to serve him. Uh, you won't lose a battle also. Uh, he begins to protect his people. Amen. And how does he do it? He does it from the inward parts. He deals with all of us, even me included. He deals with our character. He deals with the inward man or woman. He wants that inward person right. Whatever's inside, you know, sometimes people may smile in their face and do all these other things, but what's inside? The heart is deceitful. The Bible says desperately wicked. Who can know it? Only he can. God knows your heart. I'm not saying that anybody here desperately. God knows the heart, and you know your own heart. Everybody knows how they are on the inside. Me too. I know how I am on the inside. And God, is, we, we, we dealt with, he con con continued, continually dealt with me about this message day in and day out before I begin to preach it. Be right on the inside. Make it right on the inside. Don't think one thing and do another. Do, do this. Do what I said to do. Follow me. You're going to be judged by what you're doing on the inside, not on the outside. God begins to look on the inward parts. He changes the inward part. Uh, regardless, uh, we say, well, I don't say it with my mouth. If it's in your heart, out of the mouth, the Bible says, uh, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right. Amen. Oh, man, preacher, you're kind of straight tonight. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I believe that the Lord is, he's dealing with all of us. Me and God, I, I'm not putting myself to side. I want to go to heaven as bad as you want to go to heaven. Amen. I want to be right as bad as you want. But I, I have to preach the gospel. 
I got to preach straight so men and women can understand. And we were sitting in front of somebody today and the guy was like asking us all these questions. And this is the walls. And we was like all confused. I, I, I don't understand. I, I. He said, well, just, uh, just come back later. I, uh, just come back later. We, you know, and, and once you get the understanding of it. That's right. Ain't that right? So what are you talking about? Find out from the word of God. Don't take my word for it. Let every man be a liar though. And God be true. Once you find out in God's word. Don't try to get a second opinion. <laughs> you know, people go, oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. That's kind of straight. That's kind of strict right there. God is a strict God. Yes, he's a holy God. He's not going to settle for our standards. Well, I don't believe God. I don't believe. Who cares what men and women believe? Read the word of God. This is the holy God that created the whole world, that created your soul. How can the, how can the uh, clay begin to question the potter? I know I didn't want to be made uh, 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 a, gla a glass or a, a, pot uh, a, gla a pottery. I didn't want to be made a, a glass pottery clay thing. But this is how I made you. Well, I don't agree. Anyway. But for eternity. But make it correct today. It's a daily a daily life for the Savior. Every single day when we leave this church, whatever we do on the outside of this church matters. It matters. When we preach this message called real life. When people, uh, <laughs> Sister Walsh probably remembers, she's heard everything I preach. <laughs> in, the, in the movie industry, the people, they, um, they have what they call situation comedies. And these situation comedies, is they, they begin to uh, uh, live out life, like a real life, like the good times or whatever it's not. We can, Jefferson, you know, live out life that people can understand it. But after the lights go off, after the lights go off on the set and, and the actors begin to go to their separate places, and they get home and they turn on the light, they're there by themselves. They're not acting anymore. This is the real person right here. And God looks at that real person and not the actor. Amen. Be what the Lord has called you to be at all times. And that's what he dealt with me. That's why I can pre I'm preaching like this. He dealt with me already from the inward parts. If a thought come in your mind, say, forgive me, Lord. I didn't want to think that. The devil talks, you know, the devil, he always, he always tries to down all God's people, you know, try, you try to get you to gossip about somebody else. Hey, if you, if what you say about somebody, if you can't say it with the person right there, don't say it. Don't say it. Because it's gossip. Man, preacher, you're straight tonight. No, I just want you to be right and correct on the inside. Because that's what the Lord looks at. And my prayer is that my prayer for me, I've already prayed this prayer for me. Lord, if there's anything that I'm doing on the inward parts of my life that is not correct. Shake me and let me know that it's not right. Because when it's all said and done, just watch one country family. When it's all said and done, the only thing that matters is when we step our feet. on those streets of gold and hear the voice of Jesus well done my good and faithful servant Amen. I want him to say that I want to hear those words yes. allow me Lord this is this life is just a dressing room to the life to come Amen. my wife is going to a funeral in New York City that young lady she, she passed away before she died she said Wow, I feel different. And I thought in my heart, I said, may her soul was separating from her body. Who only die once, but 
live twice. You will live in this life, and then there is another life to come. Make sure tonight that you live from the inward part. Let me say the last thing up there, brother. The inward parts changed. Make sure that the Lord continues to change that inward part. Live the inward part as far as the change part is concerned. Because that's what matters. So I'll bow our heads tonight and close our eyes and reverence him tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we're thankful, Lord, for your word. Only you, Lord, can touch the heart and the soul of your creation tonight. Lord, you laid this upon my heart, Lord, for weeks. You've dealt with me for weeks about this. And Lord, I shared what you laid upon our heart. I ask God that you would do that which I can't do tonight, and that is to draw your people to you. Help them to know of a true God that we all must live from the inward part, a changed inward part. As you write, if you have written your laws upon our heart, help us, Lord, to accomplish what you've written on our heart tonight. To live a super abundant life, not only in this life, but in the life to come. Bless, accomplish your will. The altars are open tonight. We desire prayer. Come to the altar tonight. Thank you, Jesus.
kingdoms of my heart. Let's all step up our hands before we close this service tonight. Thank you, Jesus, tonight for your word that's gone forth. Thank you, Lamb of God, for your love and your spirit that's here tonight. Help us, Lord, to receive thy word with gladness. That God, that you, your word would go forth and that men and women would know the true. That God, let every man be a liar and God be true. Take your word, lodge it upon the heart and the lives of your people. Help them to apply it to their lives and to their heart. Knowing that you are God of mercy and grace, abundant mercy and grace. Lord, you also are God. But one day we will stand before you and give an account for what you've done in our bodies. Make sure, God, Lord, that the inward part is correct. Help us. Help us tonight to allow you to continue to change that inward part. In Jesus' name, let each one say amen. amen. God bless you is our prayer. Yeah. Remember prayer meeting Saturday, 12 o'clock. We'll see what this weather going to look like. Pray for us. Matter of fact, let's pray for Sister Walls before she leaves. Amen. Dearly Father, I'm thankful for my wife.